Hey guys, because over here and this is your genius guys. Today again, I'm with a new video around Raspberry Pi where we'll see how to connect thermocouple to Raspberry Pi to measure huge range of temperatures. For this, we are going to use Java along with Pi4j library to develop our application to read and display the temperature reading from the thermocouple. So if you are new to Java over Raspberry Pi, you should check my earlier tutorial on this for which I have given the link down below in the description. Basically, thermocouples are metallic junctions between two different kind of metals. Again, I am not going into the working principle of a thermocouple as you can work around that. But the matter of interest is the thermocouple generates very low voltage that can't be directly connected to any microcontroller. And for this, we need certain amplifiers with huge gains. So to serve the purpose, we are going to use MAX31855 which is a cold junction compensated thermocouple to digital converter and that comes with SPI interface and it has a 14 bit data resolution. One more advantage of this is this is 3.3 volt compatible so we can connect this to Raspberry Pi directly without the need of any level shifters. So being said that let's get started guys. Uh, so guys, let's start with the connections and over here I am having the MAX31855 the thermocouple to digital data conversion module that comes with SPA interface as I said earlier. So, so to interface it we are going to use the SPA port available on the Raspberry Pi GPIO and over here on the module we have different fins like the clock then CS pin the chip select then meso 3.3 volt and ground and this particular module has uh, gpios to connect with the microcontroller and any other circuit at one side and uh, the other side is for the thermocouple to be attached so you can connect this thermocouple over here to the max 318.5 by using these connectors over here okay so we'll do that later now on Raspberry Pi, we have, so uh, if we uh, rotate like this, on pin 1, we are having 3.3 volt, okay, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, pin 6, we are having ground, pin 19, we are having mozi, pin 21, we are having meso, and 23 corresponds to serial clock CE0 or chip number 0 is 24 and chip number 1 is 26 so let's see how to connect it first on paper and connect it and we'll connect it accordingly so clock pin over here on max 31855 module what I am having over here goes directly to SLK pin that is pin number 23 of Raspberry Pi the CS pin can be connected to C0 or C1 depending upon what you are interested in and your ability if you are using other GP other peripherals so and, uh, and accordingly you need to change on the program depending on who you have connected to C0 or C1 so for me I'll connect it to C0 then Mizu goes directly to the meso pin that is pin number 21 3.3 we can connect to pin number 1 and ground to ground over here you can see we are not using mozi pin because the max 31855 is not having mozi pin so it doesn't take input it only gives us output so for that we need to pull the cs pin down and need to provide 32 clock cycles in the clock pin to get out the data through the meso pin so let's quickly connect it and we'll get back to the java program and we'll run it and we'll check out the temperature from the max 318.5 model. So I have finished my connections. Let's connect the Pi onto the network and connect the power to the Pi 
and I am going to connect uh, my thermocouple over here to the Max 31855 module. Uh, so it goes something like this. Okay, everything is connected. Let's check out the program. Uh, so guys, as I said earlier, we are going to use Java to interact with Max 31855. Uh, so we are going to first download the library required for it that is pi4j and we'll develop our application and we'll run on raspberry pi so again if you are new to java application development for raspberry pi you should refer to my earlier tutorial on it like running java application on raspberry pi so for which i have given the link down below in the description so i'm going to first download the required library that is pi4j so this particular library over here provides us the interface to use the different uh, GPIO interfaces like SPI, I2C or general GPIO and serial all those things. So download the latest build yeah. it may take some time in the meantime you can download the code required for this from my github repository again i have given the link down below in the description go to code source yep this file over here simply copy this code over here So the download has finished. Let's open it up. Unzip it. Now let's open up Eclipse to write down our Java code. So now let's open up Eclipse. Over here, create a new project. Let's say Java couple pi. Click on finish. Uh, the first thing is let's add our downloaded library to the project build path. So over here on project, right click, go to build path, go to build path, click on configure build path over here add external jar and navigate to the folder where we have extracted the pi4j so format is like downloads then under pi4j under leave we should include the pi4j code.jar file open it up click on ok now into the project create a new class file let's say thermo data use the default public static button method now inside this file paste the code you have copied from github press s if you want to change you can change the file name to whatever you want so i'll change it to max 318855 so let's see what the code does actually First is your import libraries. This imports different classes. Those are required to interact with the Max 31855 using the SPI interface. So basically, you'll see the SPI classes only. Then we have created a SPI device. The main function which does what it does is it creates an instance of SPI that is SPI channel CS0. CS0 means if you are connected to C0 pin. If you have connected your CS pin or chip select pin to C1, you should make it CS1. Then the speed that we are using the default SPA speed and SP default SPA mode. 
a text three parameters you can configure according to your requirement but this works fine just you have to make sure you have used cs0 or cs1 then again in a while loop we are just getting the converted or degree celsius value from the max 31855 and we are printing out into the terminal then this particular function actually interacts with the max 31855 and gives us back the data so the first thing over here is we have created a byte array that contains only zeros that is actually a dummy payload for the max 31855 so as i said earlier the max 31855 only transmits data so it doesn't receive any so it can send out any data because uh, we are using spa and the spa function provided in 54j need to have some data to run the clock then we are writing that particular data into the spa bus okay which in return gives us the data transmitted by the max 31855 so this result over here contains four bytes of data that is that is returned by max 31855 so let's go through the uh, data sheet of max 31855 and see how the data are arranged and all those things if you get into the serial communication over here okay uh yeah uh over here in serial interface you can see it says you need to provide 32 clock cycles to get the 32 dot bit data out of the max 31855 so when you break down the 32 bits data returned by the max 31855 you can see different uh, parameters included in this so like uh, the d18 to d31 bit of the return data contains the thermocouple temperature d17 is dropped d16 cause uh, contains if any fault has occurred so if particular this bit is 1 you need to check bit d0 d1 and d2 which corresponds to different uh, like errors or something so like d2 if it is 1 it corresponds like sort to vcc then if d1 is 1 it is sort to ground and if d0 is 1 then open circuit again bit thir uh, 31 represents the sign bit of the return data d16 represents fault bit so if it is one no thermocouple is connected or some fault has occurred right you can check d0 d1 d2 for that then then again d15 to d4 contains the 12 bit internal temperature data the ic so after receiving this particular frame or the 32 bits data we need to a uh, part uh, like divide into different parts so you can get the different values out of it again if no thermocouple is connected this sign bit particular over here goes to zero and all other bits in the data like thermocouple temperature data makes one or goes to one okay so you can uh, go through the max 2855 data sheet for other details let's uh, minimize it and as you can know now as we have seen we need to uh, like uh, divide the total data into different part so that you can get the data of our interest then uh, so over here first thing we are checking if thermocouple is connected or not if thermocouple is not connected it is simply going to return and it will print out zero so by checking the d31 bit as i said earlier we can know if thermocouple is connected or not and along with that we need to check the fault pin or that is the fault bit d16 so over here inside we have checked if the sign bit is 0 as well as fault bit is 1 it will print out thermocouple police connected otherwise it will move into this particular thing over here which again what it is doing is it is uh, converting the 32 bit uh, data those are stored into 4 bytes of uh, that is variable result and converting into a 32 character string okay repent variable 1 and 0 only then we have created a temporary variable which contains the temperature data and first thing we are checking is the sign bit so if sign bit is 1 we need to take 2s complement then 
we need to calculate the value of the data or value returned by the max 3 double five otherwise the calculation is straightforward we need to uh, include bit uh, like 0 to 12 and we need to convert into integer value and if it is not we need to first calculate the 1s complement then we are taking the 2s complement and multiplying it with minus 1 to get the desired value so this particular block over here uh, is responsible for calculation of the value returned by the max 31855 and it is only returning us the temperature data thermocouple temperature data we are not on to the uh, like internal temperature data then at last we are checking the byte 12 with 13 those are responsible for you can see over here uh, like decimal or fractional values that is 2 to the power minus 1 and 2 to the power minus 2 so if this bit are said i have what i have done is simply i am adding 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 it, both the bits are set accordingly whatever value is there okay and finally it is returning the red value from max 31855 so we need to run it once as you know if if you have worked it on earlier and definitely it is going to throw error yeah don't worry about that then right click on your project click on export select runnable jar file again for this you can uh, like refer to my earlier tutorial on this okay uh, i need to go into the mobile by i'm creating a jar file and let's connect to the raspberry pi and over here i am using winscp for that to transfer files from my system to the raspberry pi you can use any ftp software to transfer files uh, so let's transfer the test.jar file create we created earlier along with the lib folder test underscore lib then copy it to the desktop of pi and we will open up putty to run the application first navigate to desktop then to run it use the command sudo java cha then test dot cha And now you can see it is it has printed out starting thermocouple application and it is printing out the temperature right now let's try to increase the temperature of thermocouple i'll see if the temperature over here is increasing uh, so as i have placed my thermocouple uh, over a candle over here you can see the temperature is slowly rising and it uh, actually is increasing so i don't have any uh, like a reference device over here to uh, measure the ex exact temperature uh, but uh, if you are interested you can do so so uh, it, uh, so you can see over here we are able to get data from max31855 uh, let's try to open it up uh, the thermocouple and we'll see if our application is able to detect it and you can see over here as as soon as i disconnected my thermocouple it is printing out the message thermocouple is not connected so that's all with this guys as you saw we are able to interact with max31855 and we are able to get data out of it and we have uh, printed out into the console so for this we have used java along with pi4j so see you next time with my new content thank you guys thanks for watching